There are a number of great benefits of having a layered model of network communication. First off, logical smaller groupings of complex topics, as are found in the OSI model, will simplify the learning and understanding of the model as a whole. So it breaks it into these logical small pieces that are easier to acclimate, easier to understand. It of course simplifies designing components that fit within the model. Since each layer is separate, network protocols can be designed and updated by developers without worrying about the effect on all of the other layers. So it allows things to be compartmentalized and worked on within their own compartment. As an IT pro, my favorite is the fact that it eases troubleshooting. It makes the entire troubleshooting process simpler because problems can be pinpointed to an individual layer, thus improving accuracy and the speed of which problems can be troubleshot. The OSI model is a great standard for interoperability. As I said, it defines how things communicate across a network. So by following the framework and guidelines of the OSI model, Hardware and software vendors can produce products that work at different layers in the model, but still work together without any problems whatsoever. So it does a great job of helping ensure compatibility of devices, applications, and all that network tech that we've already discussed. The OSI model is composed of seven individual layers. But before we dive into each and every layer, let's break them into two groups, the upper layers and the lower layers, and talk about those for a moment. The upper layers, the application, presentation, and session layers, are where the user interface, applications that use the OSI model, and any files or structures that use the OSI model live. So these are the layers where application engineers will focus their efforts and time. I'm betting you've already guessed that below the upper layers are found the lower layers. And the lower layer of the OSI model is where the transport, network, data link, and physical layers find themselves. The lower layer takes care of all the functions that transport information from one application on one device to another application on another device across a network. These are the layers where network engineers or IT troubleshooting pros will find themselves focusing most of their efforts. Now let's take a look at all seven layers together. At the highest level, we have the application layer. Below that is the presentation and then the session layer. We move into the transport layer, the network layer, the data link layer, and finally the physical layer. And the easiest way to visualize what's happening here is that when you're using a network application, such as email on your PC, and you transmit data to an email server, the data moves down from the application layer on your PC through all those other layers of the OSI model across the physical media. And then at the other end, at the email server, it moves up through each of the layers. So as it moves down through the layers on your PC, information is encapsulated around the data packet. So the data packet is actually getting a, a little larger right, from what was initially transmitted or desired to be transmitted within your email app. And so it's packaged up. Imagine it as a toy and you're wrapping it in wrapping paper and then you're wrapping that in tissue paper and then you're wrapping that in newspaper and eventually you stick it in a box and the box is transported to the other end, the email server, at which point it opens the box, it on does the newspaper and the tissue paper and the wrapping paper and all the other layers until it finally finds that toy, the data that it wants, that you wanted it to receive. And that's how the OSI model can be easily visualized. Well, there are a few other ways that you can memorize the layers of the OSI model. These, of course, are just a couple mnemonics, 
mnemonics are just memory aids. We remember these from probably elementary school. I know I had a bunch when I was back there. Well, a couple mnemonics to help when learning the OSI model are all people seem to need data processing and please do not throw sausage pizza away. Of course, if you're a vegetarian like my sister, you can feel free to substitute spinach for sausage pizza. So that mnemonic, please do not throw spinach pizza away, is starting at the physical layer and moving up through the rest of the layers. The first mnemonic I gave you, all people seem to need data processing, is moving from the top layer, the application layer, down through all the layers. So whichever way you want to memorize it, feel free to use the mnemonic that suits that way. Just remember that if you're learning it from the bottom up, you're learning it from the bottom up. It's a bummer to memorize the seven layers and then when asked about the seven layers to write them in reverse order because you memorize them from the bottom up, but write them from the top down. So just remember not only the seven layers, but the order that they proceed in and whether you're writing them from highest to lowest or lowest to highest. <laughs> <laughs>